All right, guys, so before we start this video, uh, I want to give a huge shout out to Bama Insider. Shout out to Kyle Henderson. Shout out to Coach Moo, Coach Sean. Um, of course, um, honored to be on their post game show and honored to be on Monday Night Quarterback. Um, so we'll be back there on Monday again to talk about Alabama and Mississippi State. But um, just kind of talk how I kind of talked about on the post game live, if you guys caught that. Um, Bama, I thought, played their best game of the year so far, and uh, I'm happy to see it. I'm happy to see it. Now, am I on? Am, am I enjoying the rat poison? Am, am I gonna? Am I on the rat poison? As I should say, no, not entirely. Um, I still have this team losing a couple games. Um, I don't know who to. I just still have them losing a couple games. I, you know, for the most part. But like I said before, this team could very well prove me wrong. And you know, one of the things that I talked about during my prediction when I said they were going to go ten and two was that defensively, I thought that, that this could make a huge jump. And I think offensively, we were well, we're, you know, we, we, we were going to have our bumps and bruises. And you know, um, we're still trying to figure out the wrinkles and, and figure out what works and what doesn't work for us. Um, and I think that during this entirety of the season, you've kind of seen that, right? I think the defense has, for the most part, been the better side, obviously, between the two sides. And then offensively, we're still trying to figure out who we are. This was kind of like back-to-back -back games now with, you know, with, you know, going against Ole Miss in the second half, I should say, and going against Mississippi State, where I just think that we were extremely simplistic. We didn't really try to do too much. Uh, Jalen Miro, you saw his development all throughout. You saw his development through this game. This was by far his best game. And yes... He went uh, 10 for 12, another 80% performance, by the way, but he also threw 464 yards. But you got to love his progression overall as a quarterback. I mean, first of all, going through his reads and doing it and, and, and do, you know, maybe not the quickest you want to see, but still going through his reads, going through his progressions. And I think one of the best things about Jalen Burrow is his game awareness is getting a lot better. He's not throwing it into double coverage. He's not forcing any throws that doesn't need to be forced. Instead, he's, he decides to check it underneath. He decides to take uh, to take what the defense gives him, and he's not. And, and you saw no hesitation at all once those running lanes were open, and pretty much his first read was well, was pretty much covered. He just took off, and that's what you got to love and appreciate because that was kind of one of the biggest critiques, especially during the Texas game, was that the, the, there were lanes where he can just step up and just take off, but he decided to kind of be a pop, more of a pocket passer. Because that's the one element of his game that was considered to be a weakness. But I think Jalen Miro is kind of embracing his identity. He's starting to kind of realize what type of quarterback he is and what type of quarterback Nick Saban wants him to be. And to simply just trust, trust the process, trust your eyes. And if you don't like what you're seeing sometimes, just, you know, don't, don't put us in a position where we don't get points. Right? I know a lot of people are going to complain that he took a lot of sacks, a lot of sacks that didn't need to be taken. But you can also make the argument, well... You know, would you rather see would you rather see him force throws or would you rather see him at least take a sack and we can live for another day or we can or we can punt the ball because we got a, 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 a looks like an all SC punter and change the field position or take a sack and give Will Riker an opportunity who's 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 going to be a Luke Rose Award uh, finalist give an give him an opportunity to give us three points like I would rather Jalen Miro do that then force throws and, and throw it into double coverage or staring down or staring down his first read and what with not seeing the dude underneath and then picking it off and taking it for almost pick six like in that Texas game. Like there's a lot of things I would rather see Jalen Miro not do compared to what he was able to do tonight. He did a phenomenal job with the role that he was assigned to. And with the exception of two drives with this offensive line, the offensive line was able to give him a lot of protection because we were able to establish a ground game. We were able to incorporate Jalen Murrow in the ground game. We were able to run a lot of power football, and we were able to tire out that Mississippi State defensive front so that when we, when we were able to get protection, for the most part, we tired them out, right? There was a lot of cases and a lot of scenarios where Jalen Murrow had a clean pocket, and he would have three, four, five, six, like, for, like seven, uh, it, it seemed like an eternity in the pocket, and he was just going through his reason if he needed to take off and try to extend plays, he would do that. So, you know, I, that's progression. That's big progression from the offensive line. That's a big progression for Jalen Miro. That's a big progression for overall our entire offensive philosophy because this is exactly what the, you know, this is exactly what I thought Alabama was going to do for the entirety of the season. Play balanced, play balanced football. Run the football effectively. Establish dominance in the line of scrimmage. Jalen Miro kind of being more of a game management type of quarterback, but a guy that for the most part that's going to use his athleticism to extend plays, taking care of the football. That's exactly what sort of offense I thought we were going to see for the for the most part for the entirety of the season. 
So it's good now that with a against the second half against Ole Miss and against this game against Mississippi State that we that we're learning, we're getting a lot better, and that's something that that I can definitely appreciate. Now we're going against Texas A and M, who's a much more dangerous front seven. They had 15 tackles for loss today uh, against um, um, obviously against their opponent against Arkansas, which is a rivalry game. So much talent, five stars and four stars all across the board. So we, you know, again, the first couple drives, we gave up a couple sacks and we had two punt drives because our offensive line was able, was not able to able to hold up, right? Is that, right? Are we going to have a little flashback, a little PTSD to the Texas game following against A&M? Because that's another talented front seven, a very talented front seven. So, or can we learn from our mistakes from those games, take what we was able to incorporate during the second half against Ole Miss against Mississippi State and apply that against A&M? That's something that we're, that we're able to see. Um, but a lot of people that's complaining that we're not explosive enough or maybe innovative enough. I mean, guys, this is what we thought the offense was going to be from the first part. The only issue we had was that the first part, Jalen Murrow, was just not really. It, it looked like he wasn't progressing as a player and as a quarterback. And our offensive line was playing like absolute garbage with the with the amount of weight that they had on. Um, so I like what I see overall from the offense defensively. You know, we made some mistakes here and there. We gave up 150 yards to the ground, and I think a lot of it was due to our inside linebackers because of the, you know, they, they took some bad pursuit angles and they weren't in the in the right spot in the right positions. But, I mean, like I said, I mean, you know, we gambled, uh, especially with the inside linebackers, right? Again, there were times where they shot the wrong gaps. There were times where they kind of over-pursued. There were times where they were not in the best possible situations. But there were also times where they forced turnovers, which led to points. There were times where they were able to become our best pass rushers and affect and 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 get and and put our defensive line in the best possible situations for the matchups that they were able to get, um, in order to get to the quarterback. There were times where they were able to stop the run, right? Jahad Campbell for his first meaningful game, nine tackles, tackle for loss, an interception, and a half a sack. I thought played pretty well. Uh, uh, Tresman Marshall again, same thing, made mistakes just like Campbell made, but overall wise, one and a half sacks. Two tackles for loss and 14 total tackles. You got to give him, you got to give the, both those linebackers the credit. I thought defensive line was pretty solid. Um, in the secondary, for the most part, we may have the best two outside corners in the country. Seriously. And I know a lot of people say, well, Texas put up 34 points and Anai Mitchell did whatever the hell he was able to do. Listen, for the most part, you know, Arnold and Arnold and Kool-Aid weren't the ones that were really getting killed. Our safeties were the ones that were getting murdered, that were getting mauled that, in that particular game. Our outside corners are giving this defense a lot of chances for them to become a lot better and to make plays, and especially how we can play well in the run game as far as containing the edge. You got to give them a lot of credit for that. The secondary might be the best aspect of this defense, but overall wise, as far as the speed and the athleticism that we were able to display over this, for, the, for the course of this entire the season, that is back. That is something that I am willing to buy is that the athleticism and the speed of this team is back because that's something that we've been missing. You can make an argument since maybe 20, you can make an argument 2018, 2017, right? I know some people say, well, Christian, well, you know, you look at a guy like Christian Harris who's a speed demon, but he was never able to have that other linebacker. I mean, Dylan Moses was not, he was way past his prime. And then obviously Henry T is just not, let's just be honest. Henry T is just not that, he's just not, he's just not that guy, but all, I mean, we literally have a rotation of linebackers, whether it's outside or inside guys, that are speed demons and guys that can rush the quarterback, whether whether they're, whether it's off ball or whether it's on the line of scrimmage. So overall wise, I thought this, that this was a great performance. The fact that we were able to put our second team in the game by the time, you know, with seven minutes and 26 seconds left on the clock, the fact that we were able to finally see Justice Haynes, we were able to see Ty Simpson get some, get some valuable reps and get some uh, opportunities. We were able to see our backup offensive line. We were able to see backup receivers. Like, we're, this is, it's, it's been a while. And I mean, it has been truly a while since we've had a game like this. And hopefully we can continue it. We, we face up against a tough opponent with a championship caliber front line. And it's got to be up to us to continue what we were to do today and show that we can still be one of the best teams in the country against a dangerous Texas A&M front and a very talented team. Thank you.